Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Opossum. My name is Max, I'm a researcher at the Chair for Computing and Architecture at ICD and I'm part of the Opossum developer team. Opossum is an optimization plugin for Grasshopper featuring the award-winning single objective RBF opt and multi-objective RBF mopped algorithms, which are not evolutionary but model-based and perform exceptionally well on architectural design optimization. If you want to learn more about the algorithms, check out the papers that you can find through the link below. In this tutorial, we're going to look at single and multi-objective optimization with Opossum. So I went ahead and opened Rhino Grasshopper together with today's tutorial file. What we see here is a parametric shell with, let's zoom in a bit, six input variables defining the height of the three openings the center height, and two offsets defining the global shape. These input variables go into a custom geometry generator. And then we're going to use Caramba to calculate the maximum displacement occurring in the shell. And we'll use this later as our objective for single objective optimization. OK, so now to find a person, Within the params tab under utils like Galapagos, you'll find the opossum component. I'm just going to take this and put it on the canvas. And we see that opossum has two inputs, variables and objectives. So variables, of course, are our input parameters of the parametric model. So let's move over here. And like with Galapagos, you can either click next to the name and drag this arrow to your input variable or you can highlight all of your variables that you want to use and right click on variables and say link selected variables. I'm just going to quickly undo this because you also have the opportunity to say link all variables. So we'll automatically find all number sliders and gene pools, which are also valid inputs for opossum and link those to the component. So you can see that it found the six number sliders, which are now co connected as variables. Okay, and I mentioned it before, the displacement is our objective for today's optimization. Both integers and numbers are valid inputs for the objective for opossum. So you can see that out of this cluster where, you know, within that we have our uh, Karamba uh, components, we get a number we just put this in this number container, so for clarity. I'm just going to drag this green arrow now onto this number component. So now we have all our variables and the objective connected to our opossum component. You open the uh, opossum interface by double clicking the component. And the first time you do so, the license window appears. You can get a free license by emailing the opossum support email address. I'm just going to put my credentials in here quickly. And hit the save button. So now the opossum interface appears. You can see that we have four tabs, optimize, settings, expert and results. Let's look at the optimize tab first. You'll find the optimization type, either minimization or maximization, meaning making a given objective as small as possible or as big as possible. Then you can choose different optimization algorithms and you can start and stop the optimization run. Let's look now at the different algorithms that we can uh, choose. Quick reminder, we're doing single objective optimization. We only have one objective connected. So the optimization algorithms that we're gonna see now are for single objective optimization. And you can see that you can choose basically between RBF opt and CMAES. RBF opt is a model-based optimization algorithm, which makes it really, really fast. And CMAES is a evolutionary algorithm. If you can afford lots of optimization runs because your um, objective is calculated extremely fast, it's better to do CMES. We're talking about um, a thousand runs or more. 
if you only can afford a couple hundred or less runs, because you know your simulation takes a while uh, to calculate your objective, then you're better off using RBF Opt. Okay, let's head over to the settings tab. In the settings tab, you can uh, specify stop conditions. First, iterations exceeded. We're gonna use this today and set this to 100, just for demonstration. You can also specify that the uh, optimization should stop after a couple um, iterations didn't improve the objective. Or you can set a given duration. You'll also find this benchmark area down here where you can maintain a log file and you can specify the number of optimization runs. Because both RBF opt and CMAES, the two single objective uh, algorithms implemented, are very robust, meaning if you do multiple runs, they'll uh, come up with very similar um, results. You do not have to run multiple iterations of your optimization. If you, however, use NSGA2, like it's implemented in other plugins, or the um, Galapagos algorithm, those are very unrobust. And there you really want to do multiple iterations, multiple runs. Um, so just to make sure that your um, algorithm didn't get stuck in a local optimum. That being said, let's head over to the expert tab. In the expert tab, you can specify algorithm specific settings. In this case, it's for RBF op because that's the one we chose. And if you hover over this window, you can see that there's a link to the RBF op GitHub. So let's quickly look at this. Okay, so here, all the settings for RBF opt are specified. Some of the settings you've already seen as defaults in the Opossum um, interface, but other settings you could set yourself, like the type of radial basis function or the number of CPUs you want to dedicate to the uh, optimization. Okay, let's head back. Lastly, we find the results tab, which is empty right now because we didn't run an optimization yet. Okay, I want to head back to the Optimize tab and hit Start. So now the optimization is running. On the right-hand side of the window, you see the convergence graph being plotted. We indicate the current iteration and the currently best found value. And on the left-hand side, you can see how Opossum changes the input sliders to uh, generate multiple different designs. Um, and which are being evaluated with this Caramba uh, cluster. So we're already done with our 100 iterations and the best found value is around 7.69 or 7.7. I'm gonna hit okay here. And now let's look at the results tab. I said before that this table was empty. If we head there now, we'll see 100 entries the 100 iterations of our optimization. If you want to explore the different variants that have been simulated, you can simply double click the entry and you can see that the design on the left hand side changes. So our grasshopper canvas is being updated once you double click on a variant in this table. If you want to export this table, if you want to save those um, results, you can hit Control A to mark everything, Control C to copy and head over to something like Excel and simply paste your results in here. Now you can save this as a CSV or anything else you, you might like. Okay, I'm not going to save this today and go back to Rhino Grasshopper. Finally, if you're done with your optimization, you can either hit save and close or close. The difference is that save and close keeps your results and your settings as you specified them and close closes the whole window and resets everything inside. I want to hit close now because we want to move on to multi-objective optimization. Okay, so 
I mentioned before that we use the displacement calculated by Caramba for a single objective optimization, and we want to use a second objective now that maybe is contradictory to the first objective. So for example, we could say that all the explored good solutions result in quite small shells. And maybe we want something that is a little bit bigger. So what I want to do is I want to use the project component from uh, Grasshopper. I'm going to plug this mesh in here. And now you can see that we protect the mesh on the XY plane. And I'm going to calculate the area of this projection. And we want to use this area as our second objective, and we want to maximize this area so that we get a large shell with a small displacement. You've seen before that in Opossum you can either choose maximization or minimization, and not both at the same time. So what we want to do is we're just going to multiply this result by minus 1, because if we minimize a negative number, the actual number is going to get bigger, right? Like minus 70 is smaller than minus 50, but that means that a area of 70 is larger than an area of 50. I'm again going to use a number container. And I'll use an expression today, just put minus x in here, in order to get a negative result. I'm just quickly also going to copy this panel down here and rename it to area covered, just in order for us to be able to see what's going on. I'm also going to add this to this group so it looks a little bit nicer. So area covered. OK. Like I mentioned before, you can either highlight multiple components and with the right click set link selected objectives. Or you could also hold the shift button of your keyboard and connect a second arrow to a number or integer. Now, when we go back to Opossum, double click the component, we'll see that the name of the default algorithm changed from RBF opt to RBF mopt, which is the multi objective version of our model based um, optimization algorithm. Let's look at this drop down menu quickly. You can see that there are five algorithms now. Um, besides RBF mopt, there's MSGA2, Particle Swarm, MOEAD, and AND Colony. If we head over to the Expert tab, you can see that the default settings are also updated to RBF mopt specific settings, like the weight method or the epsilon value. Generally, the default settings that we use are pretty good, so you don't really have to change anything here. If you're unsatisfied with your optimization results, you might again want to look at the documentation and adjust the settings. Like in the last round, we're going to do 100 iterations, also for multi-objective optimization, and hit start again. So already, you can see on the left-hand side that the explored variants vary quite drastically from what we've seen before. We get like a lot bigger topologies here. What you can also see is that instead of plotting the absolute values of our objectives, we're plotting the hypervolume now. Hypervolume is basically a measurement that indicates how good a multi-objective um, optimization result is. And again, we reach the 100 iterations quite quickly. OK. And let's head back to the results table again. So here we see now that we have more columns than before. Our results are being ranked based on the hypervolume, which is the second column. Then you have the absolute values of objective 1 and objective 2, and the parameters of the design variant. We can go ahead and sort this result table now by, for example, objective 1, by just clicking on obj1, if you want to find the variant with the best performance in objective 1. Again, I'm going to double click. It doesn't 
um, differ quite that much. Let's see objective two. So the largest shell explored is also not so different in its appearance. Let's look again at the hyper volume. So this variant now is the uh, variant with the smallest hyper volume. And this one is the one with the biggest hyper volume. Okay. Let's go back to an organized setting by rank. And um, lastly, I want to see. Uh, I want to show you what ha happens when we hit save and close. So our window closes, but if I reopen Opossum, the results table and our settings are still there. All right. With this, I want to close this tutorial on single and multi-objective optimization. Thanks for watching this video and using Opossum. If you still have any questions left, feel free to contact us via email or ask them on Rhino Discourse. Happy optimizing!